So, don't worry, fam squad, I have got you covered. I know how much you've longed for a strongest weapons video with my vast and superior knowledge of the Elder Scrolls games and, well, I'm here to deliver that vast knowledge to you. It's not because I think you are cool or anything like that, it's simply because I feel bad for you and I guess I'm just a nice guy who wants to teach you things like how to avoid being arrested when you kill a chicken or how to make the fork a viable weapon to use in your build. I haven't actually done that yet but one day one far away day when days no longer become far i will complete that task at hand for you incredible n was you by the way did i mention you all look great today is that a new haircut wow uh, very cool i give two thumbs up so as i stare at my luscious khajiit companion next to me i ask myself how do i go about telling you the five strongest weapons in skyrim and since it is a very hard question to answer because certain weapons are strong with certain builds i think i will name you five of these strongest weapons you can obtain my personal favorite ones anyway and you let me know in the comment section if you guys agree with me or not i love reading your insults towards me yay also i am going to be non-stop uploading so feel free to give suggestions on what videos you would like to see made some suggestions of tier lists would be great and i have a bunch of ideas myself but i love incorporating in what you guys like to see on this here irish channel anyways my friends it's time to move on to the topic at hand and that is Five of the named and unique, the strong and powerful, the wise and epic weapons that you can obtain in your quest across the harsh landscape of Todrum. First off, I'm going to make every achievement whore cringe with this first weapon, and that is the Rufal Axe, which you can acquire at the end of the Daedra quest at Daedra's best friend. The quest you do when you speak to the talking dog Barbus outside Falkriot when the Dragonborn achieves the high levels of level 10. For you, that is very high. Much number. Very wow. But I'm sure you have all done this quest a bazillion times and taken the Clavicus Vile Helmet for yourself. You need to if you want the Oblivion Walker achievement because the Rufal axe doesn't count towards it, but I have heard many people insult this axe, but I mean, I don't really see why. It's one of the best two-handed weapons in the game and still is to this day. It's also one of the coolest looking killing machines you can hold to take down them pesky high elves you have just had enough of because we all hate high elves, united together in this one front. The axe was given to a wizard named Sebastian Lord to kill his daughter after she became a werewolf and this story probably contributes to the very, very nice wolf design on the sides of the axe. It's a very pretty killing machine. The Rufal Axe is the slowest axe in the game. You will notice it when you swing it and it sounds like a one-handed weapon when you draw and sheath it. So while it may look like a big boy, it's actually really a small boy. Get wrecked. The axe can do a base damage of 22 while weighing 10 massive units of fatness and usually has a base value of 500 gold. But as if you were going to sell it to that wee whore of a man in Whiterun. We all know you want to kill peeps with it. You can upgrade it with ebony ingots if you aren't satisfied with its damage. And well, I think it's one of the nicest unique weapons in this game so how about it guys the movement starts today let's give the rufal axe some rights hashtag be an enwa. The only good thing to come out of listening to Delphine for what seems like an eternity is the weapon you can get from Skyhaven Temple when you've progressed far enough into the main questline. God rest your soul, you trooper you. You have to be as far as the Alduin's Wall quest to get this weapon. The weapon is called the Dragon Bane and is one of the best weapons in this entire game. Well, for the early and mid game anyways, and that's because this unique dragon slain weapon levels with the player's character through levels 1 all the way up to 46. Imagine having a useful weapon in Skyrim for 46 levels. It doesn't sound real, does it? Well, shut up. It is real, and you should stop telling me it isn't real, you filthy NYU. Now, go get this weapon. By listening to me tell you how to get this weapon, and to get this weapon, like I said, you have to be on the Alduin's Wall quest, and when you enter Skyhaven Temple, you can grab it on the table in the atrium to the left of the main place you are in. You can find it alongside a full set of Blades armor, which, by the way, is still my second favorite set of fashion in this entire game, next to Daedric armor, but... Make sure you pick up this stuff during the Alduin's Wall quest. If you don't, it will count as stolen if you pick it up any time after the quest, all the way up until you have to slaughter party snacks. Then you can get it for free again, but why wait to use such an awesome sword, especially if you are using a two-handed build on your Dover dick? So what makes this weapon so unique alongside its character scaling and awesome design is what effect it has towards plowing into dragons, and that is 20 to 40 points of extra damage to the flying lizards of Tamriel with additional shock damage 
damage to others. Again, these damage values scale with your level, so the 40 points of extra damage comes when you hit level 46, so make sure to level up fast for a big boy sword to beat down their big fire mount boys who are annoying the heck out of you. You can upgrade the sword with the steel smithing perk and it uses up quicksilver ingots to improve at a grindstone, but one of the saddest things to come out of this weapon is the fact that you can't disenchant this awesome enchantment. Also, a quick note, while the extra damage effect scales with the player, the shock damage stays the same forever. So why not go and get this sword to add to your dragon slaying build today? It's time to visit my favorite side quest in all of Skyrim, and it's not even in the base game. It's a side quest that comes with the Dawnguard DLC, and that is the Lost to the Ages side quest that you can find by reading a book called The Aetherium Wars, or by simply traveling to the Dwemer runes known as Arkengathamsathingamajig thing. I actually am incapable of speaking the English language to a degree suitable to the public eye. Send help, please. The weapon we are getting is called the Zephyr, and can be found during the quest in this exact rune, and it belonged to the ghost girl you were going to meet at the start of the runes, Katria. She fell to her death. <laughs> it's kind of funny. What an idiot. But she had a very fast boy called the Zephyr, and she will mention it to you through pointless dialogue that you may or may not listen to, but traverse the runes a bit until you come across a big log over a chasm. Stand and laugh at Katria as you do what she couldn't, and that's walk on big log to steal her bow, and then walk back off without dying. Why is everyone in this game so incompetent? Jeez, who would win, guys? Big strong log or one stupid ghosty girl. Also, don't try and pick up the bow with telekinesis, it won't work. Just walk on over and grab and boom. Skyrim does not reward initiative. You now have the fastest bow in the game without perks. Zephyr does mean speed, so I'd be sad if it wasn't the fastest bow in the game. The effect of the bow is that it fires 30% faster than the standard bow. You will notice it when you are using it. Trust me, it's a fast boy. And also, get the quick shot perk from archery and you will have the highest DPS from a bow in game. You can upgrade the bow with dwarven smithing, so grab them dwarven and metal ingots you have lying around for a small increase in damage and like all innate enchantments this bow cannot be disenchanted for its powerful enchantment. You can fire an arrow every 1.58 seconds with this bow so it is absolutely the highest DPS bow in the game. This bow will work great if you get it early in the game compared to later. It will definitely help with them dragons you want to get out of the sky quickly especially if you are good at shooting which I am not. Again send help. Now, this one is for all you vampire hunting fanatics out there who just don't seem to enjoy being part of the cooler side of evil, and that is the Volkahar clan, because ancient vampires are big swag, YOLO and all that fam squad. The weapon we will be getting this time is the Dongard Rune Axe, and it can be a bit tedious to try and get the first time since it's part of a raiding quest called the Lost Relic, a quest that you can do three times to try and obtain all three of the unique rewards it has to offer. One of them rewards being the Dongard Rune Axe, which is the one I'm focusing in on today for you axe wielding enwas everywhere. It also looks super nice, makes me happy. Make sure you are with the Dawnguard and not the ancient awesome clan of the Volkahar vampires which are obviously cooler because the quest won't be accessible to you if you decided to be a murdering flesh eater on this journey. So this dude will send you to one of like 40 different locations to get an artifact. Just keep doing the quest for him and you get all three, it won't take long. Anyways, the axe has a unique enchantment I very much enjoy using. It's an extremely unique enchantment called the sun enchantment that gives an increase to sun damage the weapon possesses for every undead being that is killed by the axe, capping off the power of the enchantment at 100 kills. The effect works like this. The weapon does 10 plus N sun damage, N being the number of undead killed with the axe since the last sunrise and don't worry, the effect doesn't seem to reset but remember, it caps at 100 kills. The best place to farm this effect I think is the soul cairn since bone men work towards the effect and there is a metric ton of them inside the soul cairn so go do that and if you want to upgrade the weapon you steal ingots Next up is a weapon that actually isn't unique, it's quite easy to get, but I think is an absolute must have in terms of it being the most powerful of its kind to use in them sneaky boy and fast attacking builds you all oh so love to do. The weapon is the Stalrum dagger that you have access to with the Dragonborn DLC and you can buy this dagger from Baldor Iron Shaper in Skull Village, Glover Mallory in Raven Rock, or you can find it in random locations around the big old island of Solstein. It won't be hard to find unless you really have bad RNG and in that case get good scrub. The dagger only weighs 4.5 units and requires ebony smithing to be able to make it stronger. That's 80 smithing boys and girls for all those who can't count. I got you fam, don't worry. But that's a dagger who likes it big. You also need to complete the a new source of Stalrum quest where you save a kidnapped dude so you can actually smith with Stalrum because apparently it's a hard material to work with that the dragonborn somehow learns to do instantly. The reason I love these daggers however is because they come 
come with a neat little perk that makes it so frost enchantments are 25% stronger when placed on items of star room. So you can have some very cold daggers for your build with these. But yeah, grab these daggers for what I feel is unique weapons in this desolate and boring land and plaster some frost enchantments on them to get the best out of them for your build. But yeah, my fellow Enwas, that's it for this video. Thank you for sticking by this list of 5 of the strongest weapons in Skyrim. I hope I showed you something that you didn't know, and even if you knew everything, I hope you enjoyed. Make sure to give me some suggestions on what videos you would like to see. Category 1 specifically, like I said earlier, I love listening to your guys' suggestions and involving all of you in my channel. I'm in the middle of the Outer Worlds at the moment, and when I'm done, I'm hoping to jot out some videos for that game since I'm eagerly awaiting the release of Cyberpunk and Vampire bloodlines 2 next year i cannot wait for both of these games they will be lit but if you enjoyed the video or learned something new please do leave a like and if you didn't learn anything new or want to be edgy leave a dislike either way ratings help out my channel and help me know what you all liked leave some comments i will reply to most of them and if you're feeling generous you could even share the video to tell your epic friends of this epic irish dude i know you want to but anyways my end was i hope you're all having a great day and you are enjoying whatever games you are playing and i look forward to seeing you for the next one. I hope you have a wonderful day, week, month, or year, and I will see you in the next one. Peace, bitches.